Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam Fife, the EXP Realty. And if you follow my channel, you'll understand that I am a big proponent for short-term rentals and Airbnbs in particular in Calgary. Now, I'm very lucky to have built a personal relationship with Duncan, with Yorkie, and I uh, wanted to bring him on the channel and talk about some of the misconceptions that people have about Airbnbs. So Duncan, how's it going, man? It's going great. Nice to, nice to be back. <laughs> yeah, of course. Why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Who are you? What do you do? Yeah, my name is Duncan Haldane. I'm the CEO of Your Key Rental Management. We're based here in Calgary. We have about 65 units and counting. It has been an amazing journey. Mm -hmm. Really love the city. I've lived here for 10 years, been in short-term rentals for seven of, seven of those years. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's it's been nothing but uh, nothing but a good time. Man, to watch you guys progress is absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, Calgary has some really good tourism here. And the fact that you've been able to build such a trust factor with your clients who own properties here in Calgary and the fact you're at 65 doors, I mean, like kudos to you, man. Like that's that's absolutely crazy because there's a lot of moving pieces with Airbnbs. Oh, Every single day there's there's challenges. It's, it's not easy. And, and I think we'll touch on some of those in the misconceptions. But for us, it's about the people. And we focus really on, mm -hmm. on our people, training them, mm -hmm. paying them well, making sure that they are uh, having a good quality employment. And mm -hmm. of course, they're, they're local as well, which is which is great. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, you've got over 20 employees now, right? I so. know. It's a... Uh, it, I, some people, I, I just every single day, it, it feels like we're, we're hiring someone new. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's great. That's awesome, man. No, good for you. So let's talk about some of the misconceptions because I know that there's going to be a lot of people from like Ontario and uh, British Columbia that you know come to Calgary. They see the tourism, they see the the cheap prices, and I think one of the biggest misconceptions about Airbnbs is the get rich quick. So based off of your experience, why don't you try to maybe dispel that myth a little, a little bit? Yeah, so for me, there is an element or maybe there's a belief in the market that short-term rentals are are easy. Mm -hmm. I can just get into a short-term rental property, whether it's a rental arbitrage property, I'll just put it on Airbnb and then all the money's going to be flowing in and I don't have to do any work. So I think there's really two pieces to this misconception. Yeah. One is the fact that there are absurd returns. Now, in some cases, you will experience extremely high returns, especially at certain times of the year. Mm -hmm. Now, in Calgary, it's extremely cyclical. So you take the, you take your wins in the summer mm -hmm. and you take your losses in, in the winter. But again, you're doing what you can to make sure that you're increasing your average daily rate overall. But for me and speaking from someone who has a tremendous amount of experience, right. it is a great investment to increase your cash flow and do better than you would as a long-term rental, but it's nothing that's going to make you rich quick. Mm -hmm. Now, the second side of that is really the passive side where I hear a lot of people on social media saying it's extremely passive. Just all you have to do is start 10 houses and you can make 10 grand a house. Next thing you know, you're making a hundred grand a year and you didn't have to lift a finger. I think that's a direct quote I've, I've heard online. Trust me, you'll be lifting your finger if you're going to be making that money. Nothing comes easy. Fair enough. But if, again, for us, it's about putting the right technology, mm -hmm. right processes, mm -hmm. right people in place in order to enable your success. But it's not going to be everything that makes you successful. Right. And I think you guys have done very well for scale, right? And you're, you guys are growing rapidly. You're doing all the right things. You're looking at it as an asset. You're building your relationships with your customers and clients and guests, obviously the most yes. important part. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I love I love that. So, Let's talk about those haters, man. Let's talk about some of the misconceptions about social media and some of the bad press that Airbnb gets. Because I know that there's probably a lot of interesting things that people like to talk about online. We've all seen the headlines, you know, Airbnb house gets trashed. I think mm. there's one article that's probably seven years old now that, that <laughs> has just kind of lived on and uh, yeah. it has so much notoriety. And and actually, we actually looked at that case and we wanted to dive into it and understand really what happened. And, and once we did, we understood these were hosts that had no experience. They weren't local. They weren't in Calgary. They left the city. They handed the keys over to people that they didn't vet their identity. Mm. They didn't have noise and motion sensors. They didn't have the technology or any of the ability to gain data during a reservation to really uh, mitigate any risk that they had. They mm -hmm. really took on a tremendous amount of risk. And unfortunately, the worst case scenario happened. So from my perspective, that has faded. Airbnb has done a tremendous job of curbing parties and mm -hmm. being a party-free environment. And we've actually seen a, a massive shift away from people actually looking to host gatherings. Maybe COVID helped that, but people aren't looking to use your house for a party house. And mm -hmm. if they are, hey, we, we have noise and motion sensors. Of course, they're privacy compliant. They don't record audio, but it helps us get data in so mm -hmm. we can understand what issues are potentially going on. And this is not something that everyone invests in because it costs money. Right. right for us, this is a baseline minimum that that we would expect. 
I really like that you touched on that because that's one of your, in my opinion, one of your big value adds, right? Is it's not just like a, a blind, you don't know who the heck's in there or anything like that. You do have those mo uh, motion sensors and those, um, and those noise, uh, what do you call them? <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, I, I, I actually have one. I actually have, a, I actually have one of them right here. Thank you. You just totally I, I saved go, me. I don't go anywhere without my that's motion sensor. Mo <laughs> that's awesome. I did want to bring up actually an interesting story that you told me. We're not going to get into specifics about it, but there was actually a building in Calgary that had a little bit of a bad rap for the property manager. And you actually were able to step in and almost uh, help that building out. Do you maybe just want to touch on that just a, a little bit without getting into detail? Because that really goes as a testament for who you are. Yeah, so we, we've had, say, distressed property owners come to us mm. and, and say, I have an issue. My property manager has completely went MIA mm -hmm. or they're not following the rules. And now I've been banned from the building from hosting uh, on short-term rental manager or short-term rental uh, websites. Mm -hmm. So what we, we did, we were able to assess the situation, see where there, there were shortcomings and then make an appeal to, mm. to the condo board and actually get them reinstated. Obviously we were then their property manager after that, mm -hmm. but it's a testament to us. We are looking to build relationships with everyone around us. So if we're in a condo building, for example, we know the property management companies, the very large ones, especially, we try to understand the neighbors around us and how can we be a good neighbor, mm -hmm. not that Airbnb over there that right. has had parties and creates nuisance. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want anyone to know that it is Airbnb because it's so well managed and the people there are using it for the right purposes and aren't disturbing the people around them. So for me, this goes from the building to the property manager to the community at large as well, right. really advocating for policy that's going to help make short-term rentals long-term viable yeah. and try to weed out and take out some risk from mm -hmm. from the other areas and the other managers who frankly just do it to try to make a quick buck. Right. And yeah, I'm really glad that you touched on that. Now, obviously we went a little bit off uh, topic there, but I appreciate that. We are going to make a video solely talking about what you do and what makes you successful. That's for another one. I want to touch on two things uh, real quick here without making the video too long. First one being people think it's almost too much of a risk. And the second one tying into that because they feel like there could be an opportunity for them to get zero nightly uh, tenants or guests that yeah. month. So you want to touch on that? Yeah, so we, we get the question a lot saying, well, what if my property doesn't get rented? What happens then? Hmm. I've never seen that happen. I've never seen it even come close to happening. There's so much demand in the market that if you put a property online, it's going to get booked. Now, the caveat is with what we're looking at doing is we're looking at optimizing properties. So we're not just looking to get them booked. I think that's easy. But I think we're trying to optimize the rental rate mm -hmm. by making sure we're making as much money as we can. I always say with having as few people through the property. So if we can if we can have as few people through the property, but really maximize that revenue, mm -hmm. that's ultimately the goal. Typically, we we average about an eighty percent occupancy rate across our entire portfolio, and mind you, that's across all property types. Mm -hmm. And we don't see properties ever go vacant for an entire month, even if you're looking at a forty percent occupancy rate. Yes, it is low, mm -hmm. but for larger properties, larger homes, five bedroom homes, you'll experience that in the slow season, but the high season is a very much a high season. So it again, it's just a larger, um, it's a larger curve that you're, mm -hmm. that you're following along. Right. No, that's awesome, man. And I actually really enjoy reading through your projections because I feel like they're, they're pretty on par. They're not stretched. They're fairly conservative in my opinion. And uh, yeah, man, that's awesome. So for the viewers out there, for anyone who you know has questions about short-term rentals or Airbnb specifically in Calgary, feel free to reach out to myself or Duncan. So, Duncan, you know where are you at? What are you doing online? Hey, if you want to reach us, you want to learn more about our services, you can go to yourkitty.ca. Mm -hmm. If you want to reach out to me directly and have a conversation, I'm always happy to, to share more information. You can email me at duncan at yourkitty.ca. If you want to Follow us on social media if you're a social type person. Instagram is probably the best place to, to reach us uh, at yorkie.ca. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming on here. I absolutely love what you do. And I'm very excited to continue to work with you for many years to come. So well, hey. for the viewers out there, you need to reach out to Duncan and ask him some questions because this guy is definitely making some waves here in Calgary. So once again, man, thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Anytime. Take care.